Hello, my name is Stephanie. I am a software developer based in Baltimore. And today we're going to go over what is user experience or more commonly known as UX. UX is the part of design that is created to be meaningful and intuitive for users. It adopts the user's perspective and aims to answer the question, how would a first time user approach this product? It encompasses the part of the design from the search icon down to the animations that occur when a user makes a click. There are many components to UX that will inform the design to enhance a user's experience. This is a user experience honeycomb developed by Peter Morville. He's this UX hotshot. And it pretty much lays down the foundation for a good UX. The honeycomb he developed identifies how each facet is important to answering the user's needs, given the product's technical limitations and capabilities, while also driving business value. It helps outline and build priorities. For example, in the first iteration, should the product prioritize usefulness over usability? Have you ever used an application for the first time and you were able to navigate it without a guide? You can thank good UX for that. It can happen even when you don't even notice it. It even starts as soon as you land on a website. Today, a lot of websites have designed their loaders to be more user-friendly so that the user feels engaged while the page is loading instead of feeling like they're wasting their time. Have you ever used something and thought, why isn't it working? And then for the next five minutes, you get exponentially more and more frustrated as you wrestle with the application? Yeah, that's probably bad UX. It can overload the user with information. As a result, the user feels overwhelmed and skims over the information they're looking for. Bad UX can be particularly dangerous when it sends a confusing signal to the user, and so the user ends up performing a permanent action they didn't want to perform. One common misconception is to equate good visuals to good UX. Well, it can be true that if you have a pretty design, it can cover up some of the application's shortcomings, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the user will walk away getting the most value out of the product. Like in the example menu here, it is unique and pretty to see, but it can be a bit confusing to others. Are the only options available what you see on the menu, or are there more on the other half? And how would you get to the other side? Do you have to swipe horizontally or in a curved pattern? So there are a lot of questions that can't be immediately answered until the user experiments around. So now you might be thinking, okay, if someone can pick this up instantly and know how to use it, then we've got good UX. But a particular design choice might not work in every case. Take these two types of menus. You could argue that the hamburger menu is a better choice because it simplifies what the user sees. But there are times when you can oversimplify the design, and forcing the user to make more than one click can disincentivize them from using the menu. Actually, there are many apps out there that initially employ the hamburger menu and then switch to the visible navigation. Believe it or not, but their users ended up using the navigation feature when it was visible instead of hamburger style. A large part of UX is knowing and understanding your users. So in order to get good UX, you're going to want to go through several iterations of designing, then getting user feedback, then redesigning, then getting more user feedback, and so on. And so UX determines how UI is implemented, and together they drive front-end development. For more information on UI or front-end development, you can click on one of the links below. And while you're down there, you might as well just drop a comment or subscribe to this channel. And you can even start learning on Codecademy today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.